Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited for today's video. It is one of my most requested videos. Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite meal prepping tools. Now, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know meal planning and meal prepping is just a huge part of my weekly process. And it's what I contribute to saving thousands of dollars every single year by just being intentional with my food and my food prepping. So I have a lot to cover today and I'm gonna break it down into three main categories. One is the meal prepping tools. Two is the meal cooking tools. And then three is going to be the food storage and cleanup items that I love the most. But before I get into the video, just a reminder, please hit that like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because you don't want to miss out on any of the fun things I have planned coming later this year. All right, so I'm getting into the video and let me know as we go through this video, what are your favorite tools that you use at home? I'm interested to know if it's on my list or maybe something I need to add to my list. Okay, so first things first, I recommend wearing an apron and getting a good apron. I love this one. Um, it has a pretty good coverage. It's one of those ones that goes from like the back to the front and ties. And I need like a full apron. But to me, an apron is a necessity anytime I am meal prepping or cleaning up in the kitchen. Next up, you're gonna wanna get yourself a good cutting board. Now, I will say I have lots of cutting boards, lots of different sizes. I have some really beautiful ones. I have some custom ones, but the one I reach for 95% of the time, especially when I'm doing my big weekly meal prepping, is just this little guy. Actually, he's a pretty good size, but he's very thin super easy to clean. Um, you can see it is a little bit stained. Try not to judge me too much, but I love it. It's kind of like, I want to say plastic. You guys probably know what I'm talking about. I'm not positive what this is, but this is the one I go to. So I would just recommend having at least one good cutting board, um, maybe a couple so you can keep things like meats and vegetables separate. Also, I forgot to mention, I'm gonna go ahead and link everything down below in the description box today with where you can find it and it'll show you all the different prices if you are interested in anything I have today. All right, so to go along with the cutting board, you're gonna need a knife, of course. So here is a place I would definitely recommend quality over quantity. More accidents happen in the kitchen because of dull knives than sharp knives. So it's so important to get good quality knives and to make sure that they stay sharpened. So for me, I have this, I believe it's six inches, uh, six inch Sentoku with the hollow ground. These little guys here, they just help release food. I think this is a Wustoff classic. I'll look it up. Um, it was gifted to me when I worked at Williams Sonoma years ago, but I've had this one for maybe eight years or so. Um, but I absolutely love it. I don't think you need a bunch of different knives. I think you just find one or two that you're comfortable using and stick to those. Next up is super basic, but that's just getting yourself a good peeler. I always find I'm using these, especially with the fall coming for all the apples that we're surely gonna pick but a good peeler is just something good to have. Next up, you have to make sure you get yourself some measuring spoons and measuring cups. So these I've also had since my Williams Sonoma days many, many, many years ago, maybe, I don't know, like eight to 10 years, I can't keep track, probably 10 years ago. And these I'm gonna show you first, my measuring spoons. I love them because they nest inside each other. And you guys, you can find these anywhere, which I love, but I just think they're so much more practical. They're dishwasher safe. Now I do have a lot of beautiful spoons, but these are the ones I'm gonna use. I hate when spoons come on rings because I think that's just not practical to use and then you get everything else dirty and it doesn't make sense. And just get yourself a nice, easy set of measuring spoons. I use these all the time, um, but again, dishwasher safe, super easy to clean up. Then my measuring cups. Now these are nothing fancy, but again, I've probably had these for about 
10 years. But the reason why I love these so much is I have always had really tiny kitchens. Um, I lived in New York City uh, most of my adult life and now in Jersey and I still have a pretty small kitchen so my drawer space is very limited. So these are totally flat and then they pop open. So I absolutely love that. I'm actually missing one. It's in the dishwasher because these are dishwasher safe. But you can see how little room these take up in your drawer. Now you'll see when I talk about most of my things, they are very practical things. Like I am definitely like function over beauty when it comes to my everyday kitchen products. All right, so then we definitely need some spatulas. I absolutely love spatulas. They're obviously great for baking, but I tend to use them on a really regular basis, whether I'm meal prepping or I'm just getting some Nutella out of a jar. You know what I mean. So anyway, so I have two main sizes. There's like this kind of standard one and then the mini ones. I actually have a lot of mini ones. I really love them. Um, they're really great for getting things out of jars. I even have some like spoonula versions. And then I have this size, which I use for like baking or for eggs, things like that. But these are really great because since they're silicone, you can use them on all of your non-stick pans without having to worry about scratching anything. Next up is probably one of the most underrated tools in all of meal prepping, and that is tongs. Now, I did not grow up using tongs. I don't know what point in my life I started using them, but these are such a must have in my kitchen. In fact, I just went out and bought these two recently because I only had two left and they're always in use. They're always in the dishwasher and I just use them for everything. It's how I turn everything, like anything I use in like a saute pan, I'm always turning things. Um, they're just easy to grab food and like to serve food. And I just, I can't say enough. I love these things and I just think like every kitchen needs tongs. Again, um, although like the metal ones can be very beautiful, I really think you should get the silicone ones or plastic if you have to. I know plastic's pretty cheap. Um, but the silicone ones are not gonna scratch your nonstick surfaces. So if you get the metal ones, they will. You cannot use metal on nonstick. Next up is get yourself a good set of mixing bowls. And again, this is one of those things where I am gonna choose a function over beauty. So I see a lot of people on Pinterest and Instagram with these beautiful like ceramic or glass mixing bowls and that's just not practical to me. I mean they're so beautiful but they're very heavy. You have to worry about them breaking. So I have this set of melamine bowls that I've had for 10 years. I absolutely love them. They are not the most gorgeous thing in the world. I understand that, but these are so great. I can literally throw them in my cabinet, not have to worry about them breaking. They're so lightweight. You can put them in the dishwasher, although I usually hand wash them. But I do use these every single week and whenever I'm meal prepping, and I just highly, highly recommend these. And finally, in the meal prepping category is funnels and this is probably the most unusual thing on the list or maybe not thought of thing on the list but here's why i have funnels i tend to buy stuff in bulk and when i buy stuff in bulk i like to keep the big bulk containers in one section but then in my little tiny makeshift pantry i put things in smaller containers just so i can have them easily accessible so instead of trying to fight the packages that I buy things in and try to like get it into the jars without making a huge mess, I get funnels. And it's so funny because no one ever thinks to get these, but I find myself using them every single week. So I have this wide mouth one, which I think is really great for dry goods. And then I have these three that came in a little set that are great for liquids. But these are just things that I use all the time that I think many people just don't think to purchase, but I think it's something that a lot of people could actually use. Okay, moving on to the next category, which is things that I use during my actual cooking process. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is this oven mitt. And I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but there's a reason why I'm showing you this. So this was actually a gift from my mother-in-law this past Christmas. 
and I didn't even know that I needed it, but I did. So if you can see, this part is fabric and then this part is a silicone. And the reason why I love that so much is because I was always getting this and especially the thumb because the thumb is always ending up in some casserole dish. But I was always getting these parts of the apron, the apron, <laughs> the glove dirty. So with silicone, you can wash it right off. Now you can see I haven't exactly washed this one off fully, but I can and that's what matters. So I would recommend getting a good oven mitt that has a silicone or an easily washable surface for um, the hand parts. So next up, I recommend having an oil spout or an oil jar that has the spout. Now the reason why I recommend this is because when you buy oil, oftentimes it's in very large containers like this guy. I buy my oil either in these big guys or a big glass jar or I just found out we have a place by us where you can buy oil in bulk and bring your own container, very exciting stuff. But the reason why I recommend having an oil jar with a spout is because oil jars tend to have too big of openings. So if you're just trying to get a little bit or just drizzle a little bit of oil, it's basically impossible or you have to put like your thumb on it to like filter it out and that's kind of gross. You really don't want to be putting your fingers on like the openings and containers. So with this, the oil drizzles out nice and slow. So I just definitely recommend getting an oil bottle or getting one of these little like dispenser pieces to put in a bottle you already have. Moving along to the actual cookware. So this is another thing where I think it is quality over quantity. And honestly, like not even quality, but I just don't think you need a ton of different cookware, especially if you have a small kitchen. Even though I've always had small kitchens, I have varied it in how much stuff I have. I mean, I definitely used to have a ton, a ton of pans and it's just, I'm always reaching for the same one or two. So if you're on a limited budget or you have a limited space, I recommend having one good saucepan and one good, like this is a saute pan, but some sort of big, like either frying pan or saute pan. So I'm gonna start with the saucepan first. And this is just a two quart uh, nonstick saucepan and I absolutely love it. Um, for my husband and I, it's just the two of us. This works super well, it's nonstick, so it cleans up really easy. It may be dishwasher safe, but I don't ever put my pots and pans in the dishwasher. Um, but this is really great for any cooking, any of our grains, uh, pastas, rices, quinoas, anything like that. Um, soups, this is usually like the size I'll use for heating up soup, but I definitely recommend having like a good size saucepan. This is definitely a go-to for me and it does have a lid too. Next up is my saute pan. Now this is probably the pan that I use more than any pan that I have. And it's just like such a good all-purpose pan. Because it's a saute pan, it does have these higher sides so you can actually put liquids in here. Um, I love making rice in this. You can kind of get the rice ball crispy and then put your liquids in it. But I think having a really great big non-stick either saute pan or frying pan is a kitchen must have. This year we got a new one on the roster and that is this giant Dutch oven. Now I did have a very small, I wanna say two or three quart, maybe two and a half actually Dutch oven that Again, I got it for free at Williams-Sonoma, but it was always too small, even for my husband and I, because I make my soups in my Dutch ovens, so I do need something bigger. I tend to make large portions of soups. So this one I got for my birthday this year. It is a six quart. It is by Martha Stewart. I didn't get the Le Creuset. I just, I don't really think it's worth the money. I don't think it's necessary. Um, this one was a fraction of the cost. You can see it is a white or off-white Dutch oven. And this one is actually really beautiful. You could definitely leave this out, 
but this is one of those things. It is form and function. It is beautiful, but it works so well. And I love a Dutch oven because if you are making something like a soup and maybe some of the ingredients you need to saute first, you can go ahead and do it all in the same pot. But this is really great. You can make roast in it, soups in it. I mean, really anything, but I'm really especially excited to use this in the fall coming up. And then last in the cookware section is going to be a crock pot. Now this is another kitchen staple for me. And funnily enough, I know a lot of people love using their crock pot in the summer so they don't have to heat up their oven and therefore their whole house. But I am definitely a fall and winter crock pot person. I do use it year round, but in the fall and winter, I definitely tend to use my crock pot the most because I do love making all of my soups and stews in a crock pot. So you can see mine is pretty simple. Let me see if you can see, but it's just four different settings on off and then also a warming thing. It's not fancy, but it works for me. Okay, so I know I said there was only three categories, but I guess I really need to break up the third category. So next up, I'm gonna talk about food storage. And food storage is huge when it comes to meal prepping because if you are not properly storing your food, your food is gonna go bad and you're just going to waste the money and the resources. So the first food storage is <laughs> my latest obsession. Um, I got these things for Christmas last year and I could not be more obsessed. I talk about them all the time and that is these produce keepers. Now two of them, it comes, you can see in three different sizes. Um, two of them have things in them right now. So I'll show you the empty one, but here's what they look like. And they do all neatly stack into this, but the lid, you can see has these holes which you can open and close depending on what you have in and then you can see it has this big container and then it has this dividing section so you can put stuff left or right you can take it out if you have something that's going to take up the whole thing or you can flip this guy open and then it sets in there like that if you want to put stuff on top and bottom just depending on how you want to organize your food or what makes sense. But I absolutely love these things. I really can't say enough about them. I'm definitely linking these below. In fact, I just got myself another set. They went on sale on Amazon, which never happens. And I got myself a second set for Christmas for this year. So I already bought myself a Christmas present. Also, they have this plug at the bottom where you can release the extra juices that catch at the bottom. And that is actually a huge part that I want to show you because if you know, if you have like fruits like watermelon or something like that, that release a lot, a lot of moisture, then you know if the fruits just sit in their moisture, then they go bad so fast. So with these, number one, this bottom little mesh thing keeps them up above the water. And if there's too much moisture, you can go ahead and drain it out. So next up, and my other favorite food container is going to be jars, like mason jars. I love mason jars. I'm a bit of a hoarder. Um, I actually discovered this size semi-recently. I got them, I don't know, sometime during the pandemic, but I got like a set of six for I think $13 at Walmart. It was crazy inexpensive. Um, but ball jars or mason jars, you can find anywhere. I do recommend thrifting them if you can, or plenty of foods or even like different household items come in mason jars, clean them out, reuse them. This used to be a pasta jar. I think this is a Classico brand pasta jar, and I love using this for food storage, but I absolutely love using these jars, um, they're great for liquids. You can freeze them, you can put them in the fridge, or like you can see all of these are for pantry items. So they're just super great. And I use my funnel to fill them all. And then last in the food storage category, it's just going to be a set of like your typical glass containers. So I have two different ones and I will show you the differences. So first of all, I have just this classic Pyrex set. I got this um, during my bridal shower, so I've had this for about eight years now. I absolutely love it. I think Pyrex is oven safe. It's definitely microwave safe. 
it's definitely dishwasher safe and I'm pretty sure you can put it in the oven although for some reason I never put my glass containers in the oven and then the other glass that I have is this one so I got these from Amazon I think this past Christmas and admittedly they're definitely smaller than I thought I thought they were gonna be like really big containers but it actually works out really well because a lot of times I just have smaller portions and I just don't need that big of a container but I love these they have the lids with the vent and they're um, these are airtight which is really great if you have something with a liquid in them but the reason why I love glass containers so much and recommend having one one good set of glass containers is one they will last just so long glass is one of those things just unless you break it it just really lasts forever and if you do have to get rid of it glass can be recycled over and over and over again next oftentimes when you're meal prepping you are taking hot food and putting it into a storage container and when you put a hot food into a plastic that plastic can leach into the foods especially if you try to microwave it or something like that so I do not like putting or storing hot foods in plastic. If you use glass, they can often be microwaved or even go straight into the oven. Even if it's frozen, you'll just have to check out your specific container, but often these can go from fridge to oven to freezer, whatever you need without having to worry about changing the containers or anything breaking. Also, glass does not absorb odors or colors, so it always cleans up super well and it's never gonna leave any colors or residue or even any smells in your containers. Okay, we have made it to the last category and that is the cleanup category. And this may seem like a funny thing to put in a meal prepping video, but it is definitely part of the process and there are a few things that I am super excited to talk about. I'm going to start out with my absolute favorite cleanup item on the entire list and that is my Dyson cordless vac. This thing, I'll show you, this is life. I am just obsessed with it. So this year I got it. It was sort of um, a birthday Christmas present that I got money for and then I got it myself. I actually did get it. It's refurbed from Groupon. But you guys, it is life changing. My house gets cleaned so often because it is so easy to use. And I just, I mean, whoever said you can't give a woman a vacuum is just nuts because this is my favorite toy in the entire house. And I just, I hate sweeping. I hate vacuuming with a traditional huge clunky vacuum. And I just can't say enough about this. So, I did a ton of research before getting a stick vacuum, like a ton. I even considered getting like a, um, what are those called, like the iRobot things and decided in the end to go with a stick vacuum and do it myself, which I'm so glad I did. But I will show you, um, mine is a Dyson, I forget the exact name. Again, I'll put it down below. Um, it's something with an animal and I think something with the number eight. I'm sorry, I did do my research, but I'll find it and write it below. But my only complaint about it is I'll try to get it on camera. There you can see. So this orange part is just like really thinly painted. And when I try to put this thing to go under like low furniture, it scratches it. So if you, if you are leaving your vacuum out in a place where people are gonna see it and you want it to be beautiful, I probably wouldn't recommend this model. I don't know if all Dysons are like that, but I will say I got my mom a stick vacuum for Mother's Day and she absolutely loves it. It was a much less expensive one. I got it from Amazon. I actually used it when I was home um, visiting her and I absolutely love it. So I'll link that one below too, but I just could not recommend a stick vacuum enough. I use it every single night when I'm done with dinner. I just run through my kitchen in literally 10 seconds and the entire floor is clean. So does anyone else have a Dyson and was it everything they dreamed of and more? I'd be like very interested. I was nervous about spending that much, but again, I did get a good deal on mine and it was still really expensive. I think mine was still like 330 for a refurbished one, um, but I, it was worth every penny. But anyway, let's move along. 
So the next things are scrapers to get things clean. So I have a metal one and this is actually meant to use for like cakes to, <laughs> to smooth them out. And then I have this little silicone thing. I don't even know what the original purpose of this was to be honest. Um, but I absolutely love these for getting my counters clean. So I have, I think they're granite um, countertops. They're the kinds that have like the specks all over them. I don't think it's marble. I think I think I have granite. But I love using these because if I have like hard stuff like that's stuck onto it, this gets everything off so well. I just swipe it like this, put it in the dishwasher, and it cleans up in two seconds. And then I also have this. This one a lot of times I actually use to get labels off of jars. So if I do have a jar that I'm going to repurpose, I just use this to kind of scratch the, um, the label off. So we do have a dishwasher and use the dishwasher, love the dishwasher, but I definitely have certain things that I hand wash. So I definitely hand wash all of my pots and pans, my knives, my Dutch oven, my crock pot, all of those get hand washed. So I have a drying rack and I love this drying rack because it's super, super compact and it's also eco friendly, which I love. It's made out of bamboo and you just open it up like this. And then I also, and I didn't bring it out, I forgot to, but I have a utensil holder that just hops on to the end of this and then you can put your utensils there too to dry. But I just love it because again, it is eco-friendly, it's made out of wood and it is super compact. I just close it up and then throw this underneath my kitchen sink. And then finally, the last thing on my list to go with that drying rack is I just recommend having a couple drying racks. Now I have two, I have this one, which is just a basic one, and I can put that under that drying rack, but I actually got this one for my birthday and love it. And it's this one that has, I don't know if you can see, yeah, there you go. It has like these little grooves that you can put stuff in to stand them up. This can be moved around, sorry. Like you can slide it down to whatever you need, but, I absolutely love this thing. It's so big. I can put like my really big pots and pans on it. Plenty of room. But that is everything that I use for meal prepping. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, learning about some of my favorite things that I use. Again, comment below what is your favorite meal prepping tool. And I'm super excited to see what you guys put and see if there's anything that I need to add to my list. All right, that's it for today. Thank you once again. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.